Welcome to Beyond Einstein. This is the final Jamboree event of World Year of Physics 2005. Albert Einstein's ideas are going to be explained, and hopefully in an interactive and entertaining way, by many special guests in, uh, everywhere around the planet. Among them, very many famous scientists and Nobel laureates. This is going to be a real trip in space and time to please Albert Einstein. We are now broadcasting from Geneva, Switzerland at CERN, and we are going to broadcast from Taipei, Jerusalem, Venice, London, Chicago, and San Francisco. And we are also going to meet special guests in other places in the world, Egypt, Finland, the Netherlands, Brussels, the United States of America, Basel, Switzerland, Pisa, Italy, Hobart, Tasmania, and as far south as the Antarctic continent, South Pole. This is the first attempt at a 12-hour long live webcast, a real marathon through space and time, the first live event that is using all possible media on Earth. We've got internet, of course, we are broadcasting on the internet, web, email, video conference, but also satellite TV. You can watch us on satellite TV. Just check how to do, how to watch on this very website. And this has been made possible thanks to a host of technology partners. I won't name them now, but you can see the logos right under here on the viewing window of the website. I hope you're going to make it. It's not easy. It's not trivial. If we make it, we're going to end up in the Guinness Book of Records. It's time to start the CERN event. We are in Geneva, Switzerland, as I said, at CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research. This is the largest physics laboratory on the planet. And I'm pleased to have with us today our Director General, Robert Emar. Welcome. Hello, Paola. Thank you for being with us. So the floor is yours to start this event off. OK. I think CERN is certainly welcome to have this uh, last event of the year of physics. I think I did not like to call that the conclusive event, because what we like is to go beyond the Einstein. And uh, for that, we should make sure that the science becomes popular, and the science will be, should be recognized as part of the universal culture. That's why I hope we will have to take this opportunity of this event to have science becoming more and more known, more and more popular. And why not to discover, by increasing curiosity of everyone, to discover a new Einstein. I think it's the goal. Thank you. It's hidden among the CERN physicists, for sure, the young ones. It's <coughs> time to explain very, very shortly what CERN is all about. And because this is a multimedia event, we are going to do that with a short video clip. CERN in three minutes. CERN is the world's largest scientific laboratory. It covers six square kilometers scattered over 12 sites either side of the Franco-Swiss border near Geneva. In 34 kilometers of tunnels and caverns the size of cathedrals at over 100 meters underground, CERN hosts facilities for experimental physics. Scientists from all over the world work here in international collaborations to study and understand the structure of matter and the forces that hold it together. Stars, planets, seas, air, humans, everything around us is made of matter. Matter is made of atoms. Atoms are made of electrons orbiting around a nucleus, which in turn is made of protons and neutrons. Inside these, we find quarks. In the newest accelerator, the Large Hadron Collider, due to start operation in 2007, we collide particles at nearly the speed of light to study the quarks and other particles. Many of these particles only existed in the primordial universe for a fraction of a second after the Big Bang, when all the energy transformed into matter. In CERN's laboratories, we can recreate the same energy conditions that existed then and shed light on such questions as, why do particles have mass? What is the nature of dark matter in the universe? 
Why did matter triumph over antimatter in the first moments of the universe, making our existence possible? What was the state of matter a few microseconds after the Big Bang? The experimental and theoretical study of these conditions allows us to understand the fundamental laws of nature and to unveil the ultimate mysteries that govern our universe. In the course of their research, CERN scientists have often come across discoveries that have affected society and our lifestyle. The technology used for particle detectors is at the origin of security scanning equipment and of several medical applications. The research on antimatter has brought us positron emission tomography, which is used to diagnose and cure several brain disorders. Last but not least, the World Wide Web was invented at CERN in 1990 by the British scientist Tim Berners-Lee. The web soon grew beyond the world of particle physics and has become our primary repository of information, changing and improving the way people interact and communicate. To treat the massive amounts of data produced by the Large Hadron Collider, physicists together with experts from industry are building a web of cooperative computing called the GRID. The GRID will allow thousands of research centers and universities to share their data storage resources and computing power, transforming the internet into a giant global supercomputer and building capacity for the science of tomorrow. Okay, may I invite now our first guest, Professor Marshall Ducloy, which is the chairman of the steering committee of the World Year of Physics. Please, Mr. Ducloy. Marshall Ducloy is also the inventor of the World Year of Physics. So I really want to ask you how this idea came to you. How did you manage to make it become real? Yeah, it all started in uh, year 2000. At that time, I was uh, president-elect of the European Physical Society. And uh, in many conversations with uh, colleagues, physicists, we just complaining about the decrease of students in physics and things like that. And so I, I thought that we have to do something to find a worldwide response to a worldwide problem. And uh, I came to the idea of having a world year of physics. And uh, uh, at that time, I, 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 say, I thought and I say we should find a good date. And uh, 2005 was a real one because it was the 100th anniversary of the world year of, of the 1905. The, uh, Tell us more about 1905. What 19, happened in 1905? 1905 was uh, um, uh, the Anus Mirabilis of Albert Einstein. He was 26 years old. He got his PhD uh, at that year, and he wrote four articles. He was not known at that time. He wrote four articles, which was published in the Annales de Physics. I mean, uh, and uh, two on the theory of relativity, in particular the famous formula E equal mc squared and uh, one on the quantum hypothesis for the, for the photon and the light, and finally one on the Brownian motion. Who else got an Andrus Mirabilis in the history of science? Was, uh, Who else? Only Albert Einstein? Oh, yeah, there was a famous year of, uh, uh, of uh, Newton. I don't remember exactly the date, maybe yeah. someone knows. Okay. But I mean, it was uh, at that time uh, in 16 something, and uh, it, he, he gave the theory of gravitation. So it's something not everybody can get. No, I think there are only two or a few people. Maybe we should also <laughs> re uh, recall the importance of Galileo if we are speaking yes. about that. But then, I, I mean, we have to go, uh, I mean, coming back to that, I mean, we have to, uh, to get the approval of all international organizations. So, I mean, first EPS agreed, then the IUPAP, International Union of Pure and Applied Physics, General Assembly of UNESCO in, uh, in 2003, and finally, the General Assembly of UN. I mean, it was United very Nations. difficult. In June uh, 2004, fantastic. at in time. <laughs> and then we have to start uh, preparing all the events. There are more than 85 countries uh, which, are, which have uh, uh, organizing events. I think more than 2,000 events uh, everywhere in the world. And, uh, and uh, really, now we have to think, as, as uh, Professor Elmar was saying, to think how to continue yeah. after in 2006 and more, because there are a 
so much momentum, so big momentum from physicists to communicate with the public at large that we have to continue, we have to find the right events that we have to continue after. I mean, that's, that's very important. That's our task now. Did you already get some results? I mean, you wanted more, more young people to study physics. Uh, that's very difficult. You need time. I've been told that in France there are 25% more students in the first year of, of university for scientific studies. I cannot say it's correlated, but at it least might it's be. A, it might well be. be. Could be. <laughs> Professor Martin Huber, which is the <coughs> present chairman of the European Physical Society. Welcome, Martin. <laughs> okay. We can Kim. go, I think you need the computer, so we can go to, to sit on the table, on the table. and uh, you can go and sit on that uh, chair. Thank you. So Martin were, was president of the European Physical Society. I sit here, you go there. And um, you are now vice president of the European Physical Society, but you're also the convener of the highlight event in the panorama of physics event, not popular events for young people, but physics events in 2005. What was this event? Well, I think that was uh, in Bern in July of this year, when we had a whole sequence of events which covered, um, which covered history of science and which, covered, which also, uh, also was a celebration with the president of the Swiss Confederation, um, uh, where we had lots of guests, including uh, the director general of UNESCO, who had first approved the world of physics. He is not a physicist, isn't he? He is not a physicist, no. And he but came to he, the biggest came, physics event. He came to this event and it's gave a, very a, strong a short sign. speech. Yes, yes, we were very grateful for that. And then we had a, a major conference where we actually looked at the physics in future. We, uh, it was also called Beyond Einstein, like your webcast here. Yes. It was called Beyond Einstein Physics for the 21st Century. And there we looked at the fields which were unlocked by Einstein in 1905 with his famous papers. Uh, one part of the conference was called Photons, Lasers and Quantum Statistics. And of course, you see how important this field is now because almost everybody has nowadays a digital camera, which clearly is based on the photon principle. There was another part of the conference called Relativity, Matter and Cosmology, where of course some of the most active parts of physics nowadays and also things which are done here at CERN were discussed. And in fact also everybody is using the, uh, the general relativity nowadays by using a GPS, the global positioning yeah, system. Yeah, we're going to listen so more see, about all this you see later how, during the how webcast. You see how things have, have influenced and how you should look forward in further developing these fields. And the third part was called uh, Brownian motion, complex systems and physics in biology, which of course uh, stresses also the fact that physics is a central natural science and is, is fertilizing all, all fields of science. Okay, we can see here a, a picture of the Einstein Terrace that you inaugurated during this uh, Yes, conference. this was the final event where we really put down something which, was, which stays there. There is also at the moment a major exhibition in Bern uh, on, on Einstein, and there is of course what also will remain is the Einstein House, the house where he actually lived in 1905 in the old town of Bern. We are going to hear more about Bern later in the program. Uh, we've prepared a little video clip of best of World Year of Physics events, not, not uh, physics events, but popular events. So best of clips, just to get an idea what happened in 2005 so far. Yes, what we're trying to show here is that sound is just pressure, pressure and air. So we're sending the sound into this tube, which is filled with gas, and there's a lot of holes all the way down the tube. And the gas comes out and we light them with fire. So we have all these uh, small flames, 
as we send the uh, sound into it, you get a, a pattern uh, of uh, high pressure and low pressure. It's called standing waves. Oh. We have a speaker here. We put it into a box yes, just yes. to get some more bass mm -hmm. out of it. Yes. Okay. Oh. 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 <laughs> Pushes the air out of the hole, the gas out of the holes. Yeah. And some flames. What are the This experiment was published for the first time in a scientific journal in 1905. And right after one of Einstein's famous articles, you'll actually find this experiment described. 100 years old. It is the most famous equation in the world. E is equal mc squared. You don't have to be first-year physics students like these to know that means even the smallest amount of matter has the potential to release huge amounts of energy. Einstein transformed physics by confirming the existence of atoms and won the Nobel Prize in 1921 for his theory on electron emissions. His conclusions an inspiration to physics students today. Well, Einstein is a big part of science at a very early age and he kind of lays a fundamental basis for physics. A lot of the stuff that he's done is, you know, brilliant. And all the different discoveries he's made really changed physics. Evidence of Einstein's theories is all around us, from smoke alarms on the roofs of our houses to automatic doors that we all walk through. The mechanics behind these devices, all paying homage to the legacy of Albert Einstein. I'm here in a physics lab at the University of Maryland where students just like you are learning about the wonders of physics. If you've ever wondered why objects fall to the ground on Earth but float in a space station, if you've ever wondered how airplanes stay in the air or why the sky is blue, then maybe you should learn more about physics. Puzzles. Science is the solving of puzzles. And nobody loves a puzzle and a good mystery better than a physicist. When we find a puzzle, we look for clues in the only way we can. By what we see and hear and feel. Ready to start solving puzzles? A good place to start is Physics Quest. Physics Quest is a scientific mystery inspired by the life and work of Albert Einstein. First, you and your class have the opportunity to solve four physics puzzles. Then, to make it even more interesting, when you solve each puzzle, you will find one clue to the location of a hidden treasure. One lucky class that solves the mystery will earn a trip to go collect the treasure in person. So get going, become a physicist, and start solving a few of the mysteries of the universe. Vienna celebrates physics. From September 27th to the 30th, the World of Physics 2005 was celebrated here in Austria, culminating with a series of events at the University of Vienna. The World Year of Physics Talent Search 2005 attracted quite a number of young and very young researchers. 
Art schools from all over the country demonstrated experiments which were highly acclaimed by the public. The World Year of Physics in Vienna and throughout Austria was an extraordinary success and left a long-lasting impression on thousands of people who were able to experience for themselves the excitement of doing science. I think we are now ready to start our world tour through the Tanberg video conference system. And uh, we are going to a very unusual place if we speak about science. We are going to the ancient library of Alexandria, Egypt. And I think this is very important as a message, a cultural message for science. And also, CERN has a very big library with a, a big responsibility. Before giving the floor to Egypt, uh, Dr. Emar, can you tell us about the CERN library first? Well, the CERN library is a very large uh, pl place where you can read something like 2,000 articles, new articles per year coming from CERN. And at the same time, this is devoted to what we call open access. That means everything we have is digitalized, everything we produce is available on the web from any part of the world which is related to the, to the network. I think we are very proud to have been one of the first to start this open access to, to science to, to everyone. I have personally signed the Berlin Declaration uh, to formalize this important commitment. And we hope by next year to have more and more institutions involved in this open access in order to allow everyone in the world, which have not perhaps a very high revenue, to buy all these uh, articles from the, the publications editors. I think we'd be quite glad that they have access to our production and more. That's why this open access is a very, very strong message I'd like to, 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 to convey to you. Try to, to assume that more and more institutions will become members of this open access.